In this video, we are going to be learning about radioactive decay series. Now, to help us understand radioactive decay series, we are going to be looking at a graph and the decay series of a certain atom. So let's look at this graph here. First of all, on my y-axis, like always, we are going to have either my neutrons, so the amount of neutrons, or the atomic mass number, which is the amount of nucleons in the nucleus. And on my x-axis, we are going to have over here my amount of protons or my atomic number. So if you remember, my amount of protons will tell us which atom it is, and my atomic mass number will tell us the isotope of the atom. So if we look up here, we are starting with 92 protons and 238 nucleons. So that means we're using uranium-238. Now uranium-238 is unstable, so it's going to go through a alpha decay, where we lose either an alpha particle or helium, which is essentially the same thing. So then, when we lose that alpha particle, we end up at thorium-234. Now thorium-234 is unstable, but for thorium, what's going to happen in this decay process is we're going to undergo two beta decays. So the first beta decay will change a neutron. If you remember in a beta negative decay, a neutron becomes a proton by emitting an electron. And then it's going to become protactinium-234. So it's going to be the isotope of protactinium-234, and that's going to be unstable. And it's going to undergo another beta negative decay, and then it's going to become uranium-234. Now after uranium-234, we're going to have several series of alpha decay. So then from thorium-230, we are going to end up going to radium-226 after another alpha decay. And then from radium-226, we're going to end up going to radon-222 with another alpha decay, and then we're going to have another alpha decay again, see this series happening, until we hit polinium-218. Now, at polinium-218, something very interesting happens. Some, we have many choices now. So from polonium-218, there's many paths we could take down. We could go to astatine-218 with a beta decay, and then we could take another beta decay and go to radon-218. But now from astatine, we also could have taken a alpha decay and gone all the way down to bismuth-214. Or, way back at polonium, we could have taken the route of an alpha decay first and gone to lead 82, and then, or sorry, lead 214, and then gone a uh, beta decay into bismuth uh, 214, and then another beta decay into polonium 214. And there's so, if we see this, there's many paths they could take to get to our final end product of stability, which will be lead 206 we could also have something called a chain reaction effect. So if we remember, right here, when we have uranium-238, it's shooting out an alpha particle at some velocity. And then we're going to have beta particles coming up here. Now these, when it shoots out these uh, decays, they could end up hitting other uraniums, which will cause more decay. And we end up getting a chain reaction until it's all used up. So they keep on radioactively decaying and affecting each other's with their emitted pro, uh, particles. And that is essentially what is happening in a radioactive decay series. Now, explain why gamma decays cannot be shown as paths on a decay series like in the graph. So I want you to pause this and think of what is gamma radiation? Why can it not show be shown in a graph? What is the graph showing? Think of the x and y axis. So now let's go over some dangers of radiation. There are also some benefits to radiation, but right now we're just going to be looking at the dangers, and you'll learn about some of the benefits later, and if you read your textbook. So radiation can cause radiation sickness, because radiation can ionize cell cellular material, which will disrupt intricate biochemistry of the body. The blood cells and lining of the intestines are particularly vulnerable to radiation. So a lot of times this is when we're using alpha and beta. Then we also have something called genetic damage. And that's if we have very high energy particles and 
gamma rays, which can actually alter our DNA and cause harmful cancers and mutations in the future. Now, one thing about this is when we hear of radiation, we are constantly exposed to radiation. We have radiation in nature all the time, but they are in low enough amounts that our body could heal itself from that radiation. But now it's when we have too much radiation is where we have many problems. 